Um, Monsignor, we were just talking about the uh, Special Issues Committee and its uh, formation, and you had gone through who, had, uh, who served on it, at least um, initially. And you said that it was set up, at least in part, to, in response to um, the Gerald Ridsdale situation and to uh, give support to uh, his victims. Is that right? That's correct. But, yes. of course, it had a broader role than, than just Ridsdale. Yes, it was to um, be standing by to give advice to the bishop um, as required. Yes, and during the course of its functions, no doubt, uh, it received information or complaints uh, about uh, sexual abuse uh, or misconduct by priests in the diocese. Uh, it... Um had a process by which if people wished to make a complaint to the diocese, um, they could make a complaint uh, officially through a contact record or the priest or agent of the diocese would fill out a contact record uh, or someone may phone in uh, and uh, they would then uh, be able to uh, give that complaint uh, to the bishop and then if the bishop sought the uh, uh, opinion or, or advice of people uh, that could be taken through the SIC. Yeah. And the special issues uh, captured in the name of the committee, um, those were uh, issues of uh, child sexual abuse, is that right? The term was taken from the national body. The national body was called the SIC, the Special Issues Committee, so we simply took it from that. Um, it could be for any number of things. It could be a complaint, um, in my time, historical complaints from memory um, on uh, abuse. It could be uh, matters uh, concerning uh, other issues or problems that um, a, a priest may have apart from that. So you said remit was, was um, broader than... Uh, child sexual abuse? Yes, if it was an advisory committee to the bishop. And on the receipt um, of information, let's say, taking the example of a complaint or information about child sexual abuse by a priest, what was then your role in dealing with that information? What would you do with it? Uh, the information was always, per the protocol that was signed off by the bishop, uh, taken down in detail. Any complaint, and there were very few of those over the course of my time, um, but any complaint was taken down in detail. So if somebody um, wished to make an appointment, uh, they would make an appointment, uh, come and see uh, myself, or myself and another member of the committee, we would make sure that uh, anything they said was faithfully uh, recorded and was uh, handed to the bishop. <coughs> According to the protocol, generally speaking, um, I'm sure you have a copy of it somewhere, uh, he would then have to ensure there was a, um, a suitable inquiry, uh, which I think from memory could be either through himself or another suitable person. Uh, the uh, results of that inquiry, whatever they may be, uh, were then placed in the office of the bishop himself, as in, when I say office, I'm talking canonically, the um, diocesan bishop himself, who, according to the protocol, acted personally uh, in the name of the diocese in matters of complaints. And in what circumstances was information that revealed uh, the commission of a criminal offence passed on to the police? The understanding from uh, the protocol was that uh, the bishop was to uh, seek any uh, counsel he felt necessary uh, on information that was given him, whatever that information was. Uh, that counsel would be through his own uh, legal advisers of the diocese, it could also be through the National Committee. It could also be through other uh, Episcopal uh, advisers to him uh, and that he would 
hand on any material uh, that was to be handed on that was uh, mandatory, that was a responsibility he had. So did you say it was mandatory or it wasn't mandatory? The protocol uh, was saying that all information must be handed to the uh, bishop, the diocesan bishop, and it was for the diocesan bishop then on taking appropriate advice as needed uh, to decide what avenues must be taken with that advice. Yes. So the decision was, having taken the requisite advice and so on, the decision was the bishop's decision as to um, whether to hand any particular information onto the police or not. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, can I re refer you in the... Sorry, before you move on, and would the bishop then come back and advise you what he had decided? Uh, no, um, in one sense. Uh, we would hand on to the bishop uh, our report, and uh, the bishop would um, take that report. Uh, our responsibility was to also advise whether or not a person should be uh, stood down and uh, it was only probably um, three or four occasions I can think of. If there was a question mark, if... Sorry, uh, let me be clear about my question. Did you get specific feedback from the bishop as to any recommendations or information you passed to him? No. no. Okay. Um, Monsignor, I'd like to refer you to in the Ridsdale Tender Bundle... Volume 2, it's tab 9090. Um, I take it you recognise this document, um, Monsignor. It's the transcript of an interview uh, with you in June of 1993 for the purposes of Catholic Church insurances. Yes. Yes. Now, when you gave answers to the questions that you were asked uh, on behalf of Catholic Church Insurances, we can take it, I assume, that you gave truthful answers? Uh, to the best of my ability and knowledge. Yes. And, and full answers? Yes. Yeah. And you accept, as I understand, that um, this is an accurate transcript of what you said in that interview? Uh, I'd have to accept it on memory, uh, as in lack of, yes. Yes. Now, <laughs> Monsignor, dealing with um, the question of Gerald Ridsdale, are you able to identify when it was that you first gained knowledge of Ridsdale sexually offending against children, and when I say children, I include adolescents. Uh, yes, to my mind, it was very clearly when uh, he was charged by police. And by that, are you referring to December 1992? Uh, yes, when it, when it became a, yeah, a charge for court action. Now, there was a period prior to that when Ridsdale uh, was receiving treatment in New Mexico. Uh, do you recall that? Uh, I, re I recall one event in particular, um, not anything to do with his treatment. It was uh, a request by the bishop to contact um, a place in New Mexico. Yes, and the purpose of you contacting the place in New Mexico? Uh, it was a generic request by the bishop. He gave me the information of the place. I had not heard of it. I didn't have knowledge of it. Uh, and it was something to do with uh, an inquiry about um, uh, Jared Ridsdale, I believe. Yes, and specifically to uh, inquire as to whether there was a place there for him to be treated there. I think it was of that nature. Yes. And that was uh, for treatment for 
at least if I can put it at this level, um, sexual misbehaviour? I did not get any uh, details as to um, uh, what it was for. I, I asked the question, um, you know, what's the purpose of um, um, you know, this place? And he said, oh, it was for various people with various issues. And is it not the case that um, you knew that Bishop Malkerns went to New Mexico in September 1990 to visit Ridsdale at that facility? I can't recall that specifically, but obviously if that was on his travels, I would have been aware of that at, at the time. Yes. And so what was your understanding as to why Ridsdale went to that facility? The um, simple comment that was made to me by uh, the bishop, I think it was, was that he was... Um, uh, he had homosexual issues. He was dealing with homosexual issues. And what did you understand that to mean? I understood that at that stage of my life to mean um, acting out or being involved in um, adult homosexuality, which would have been um, quite contrary to remaining in the priesthood. And did you understand that to include as... Um, Father Bryant understood it, uh, the possibility of sexual activity with or attraction to uh, adolescents. No, I didn't at the time, no. And in, at the time of uh, Ridsdale being charged, how did information um, as to those charges... Uh, come to you? I can't be sure, but I think the fact that he was uh, charged and it became um, public knowledge was then something which was relayed to the Bishop's office. Now, was there a time when you became aware from discussions with Bishop Mulkern um, that there was a record on the diocesan files of a complaint made against um, Ritzel <coughs> dating as far back as 1961? I can only recall that in the uh, months and the years following uh, Ridsdale's uh, original um, charge by police, um, a whole lot of information came out and uh, in the course of that information coming out over those months and years, uh, that would have been some of the information that uh, would have come, come forth. Did you come to know um, at any point of uh, a meeting of uh, priests who were concerned about Ridsdale's behaviour when he was at Mortlake? Uh, no. No, that was well before my time. Now, also in the Ridsdale bundle, can I take you to um, tab 104, capital B? Um, you see this document, uh, it's referring to a Paul Levy writ, and it's a document on the stationery of the bishop's office. Yes. Uh, and it's a, during a time, that was in March 1994, when you were the bishop's uh, secretary. Yes. Uh, is this uh, a note that, that is yours, that you took down? I can't be sure, but it may be. Well, in your position as Bishop's Secretary and Secretary or Convener of the Special Issues Committee, this is just the kind of issue you would deal with, isn't it? In other words... It, uh, it, it, it could be. Um, there were uh, several um, uh, people involved at the stage of, um, of uh, Ritz 
uh, civil um, criminal charges on um, uh, Ridsdale. Uh, but if it came to the Bishop's office, uh, it might be that I would uh, have it sent to me. Well, who else in the Bishop's office might have dealt with it? It could have been dealt with by um, his lawyers, uh, the Dyson lawyers. It could have been dealt with by the uh, Dyson finance officer initially. But in general, it, it would probably be dealt with by me. And this, you look at this note now, this, this is really your note, isn't it? As I say, could, yes, could well be. Well, I, I'm suggesting further than that. You, you look at it and read it. You know it's your note, don't you? Can I see the heading, please? Yes, of course. Yes, that would probably be my note. Yeah. Yes. And do you see that what this note records is really an effort by on behalf of the diocese, the author of this note, to give the runaround to uh, the solicitors acting for Paul Levy and their efforts to serve a writ on the diocese. Do you see that? I would read it um, a different way. This has come out of the blue, unknown prior to this writ. It's been served on the Vicar General of Melbourne. All right. So hand the writ over to the Dyson solicitors who will have to um, send it back to them because we can't touch it. It's been served. And they will have to bring it up to us. My understanding is if a writ is served, that becomes a legal matter for um, lawyers. Well, it's of course for the lawyers, but it's also for the parties to the, to the litigation, isn't it? And what you've recorded there, you, you say that uh, I told Mr. Cud, uh, Monsignor Cudmore, now he's in the Diocese of um, Melbourne at that time, am I right? Correct. The Vicar General, perhaps, was he? Uh, he would have been, yes. And uh, so you told Monsignor Cudmore to simply hand the writ um, over to the Melbourne Diocese solicitors I will probably send it back to um, Blackburn, that's Morris Blackburn, the solicitors, making them chase around a bit more, double exclamation mark, taking a bit of um, joy in the frustration and delay that will be created, it seems. No, it wasn't taking joy. It was... I had wondered why uh, a solicitor had simply served a writ on the Vicar General of Melbourne when perhaps they might have phoned and asked where should that writ be sent because now, if it, I understand from memory, uh, Paul Levy was probably a Ballarat issue, it would have to come to Ballarat. It should have come to Ballarat in the first place. It was um, puzzling to me why people would simply serve a writ and not first ring up and ask, uh, does this person belong to you? Does this person belong to another diocese? Well, leaving that aside, as to why they may do that, let's address what you did or what you should have done. Uh, well, I believe that what I should have done was that. Ask them to give that to your lawyers immediately and they will redirect it because a, a private person can't interfere with it. Well, what you could have done is assisted, uh, the, assisted the process by saying that the diocese's lawyers, that the diocese of Ballarat's lawyers, will accept service of the process, um, redirected it appropriately. I believe that's what I was saying. Oh. Their lawyers would do that. Well, I suggest, uh, Monsignor, without taking more time on this, that <laughs> what this shows is you were being unhelpful and taking some pleasure from giving the runaround to someone who was seeking to seek legal redress against the Diocese of Ballarat? I would say, going back then, I was asking them to put it through the proper channels. <laughs> now, moving on um, to the question of um, Father BPB, you are familiar with who I'm referring to? Uh, yes. And 
there are certain details in relation to um, this matter which uh, we won't canvass um, on account of protecting any possible uh, prosecution. You understand that? I understand that. Yes. Now, you were an assistant uh, priest in a particular parish where Father BPB was the parish priest for a period of time. Is that right? Yes, I was. And if I can show you in the BPB tender bundle tab um, two, um, you will see that this is a note. We can just scroll down. Uh, it's signed by the bishop. So this appears to be in a note recorded by the bishop. We can scroll back up again. And he says that um, a certain parishioner of a particular parish called to see him um, on July the 7th, 1989. Now, firstly, that was uh, approximately two years after you had left the particular parish where you had served as assistant to BPB. Is that right? That would be correct. And uh, he said that his son had been having behavioral problems and that he and his wife had asked Father BPB to help who had taken a special interest in the boy, age about 13. Um, and it says the previous day the father had called to visit uh, and there'd be nobody home. And so it goes on. You, you can read it there. But at the end of that um, paragraph, it says that Father BPB agreed that he should resign his position as parish priest immediately and agreed to my suggestion that he take counselling from Father Dan um, Torpy. Now... This was also just slightly before you took up the position as secretary to the bishop. Did you come to learn of this complaint um, about BPB? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I received a phone call from our living housekeeper at the time, or correction, the, the living housekeeper of that parish, um, who uh, asked me if I knew um, anything about uh, an upset um, that had occurred that day, and I said, no, I didn't. And um, she asked if I would come round and speak to um, this particular uh, priest. Uh, and I said I certainly would uh, when, when I would get to Ballarat. And I'd, either I was in Ballarat for uh, tribunal work with my, my predecessor, um, <laughs> Brian McDermott, or I got there at some point um, within a day, I can't remember now. And I spoke to uh, the priest concerned, who indicated to me uh, that he was uh, burnt out and that he'd had some sort of breakdown. I took that at face value. So did um, his housekeeper, whom I knew very well and who had called me. And you, you knew her because um, of your time when she was your, had been your housekeeper too, when you'd been assistant priest? Correct. Yes. And then did you take that up with the bishop? Um, I would have um, had a conversation with him next time I saw him and uh, said, you know, what, what, what's the situation or it's, it's a shame about that particular um, individual. And uh, yeah, he gave no indication that it was not as had been presented to me. And once... Um, BPB had been removed as uh, parish priest. Um, you then asked the bishop, um, as I understand it, uh, why he had been removed, and the bishop told you. Is that right? Uh, no. Um, my understanding was that he'd been removed, uh, correction, that he had resigned uh, because of um, burnout and a breakdown. So... It, you weren't told by the bishop that it was because of BPB's, as it was put, inappropriate conduct with children? No, because I was not then uh, bishop secretary.
we see um, tab uh, three, you'll see that BPP then resigned. Uh, and then if I can show you tab seven. Now, this is a meeting, uh, minutes of the meeting of the consultants on 20 March 1990. Um, at that time, you were the secretary, uh, and I understand this is your manuscript, is that right? Yes, I would have just um, taken up duties that year. Yes. And uh, the practice when you were secretary, um, was it that you would record the minutes in manuscript in a minute book, is that right? Uh, for the consultants? Yes. 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 And did you do that during the meeting, or did you take notes and then write up the minutes subsequently? Um, in general, I think you would try to um, write as you went. Directly into the minute book? Mm. Yes. And then at the following meeting, um, I take it you as the secretary would read out the minutes, and then they would either be confirmed or amended as required? I'm unsure, but I think that was... Uh, probably the way it happened, yes. Yes. And if one has regard to the second page of this particular minute, um, you'll see that it says that Father BPB was appointed assistant priest, um, effective Saturday, 31 March uh, 1990. So he had resigned um, his previous parish in the circumstances we looked at a moment ago, and now he was being appointed uh, assistant priest in a different um, parish. Do you recall what was explained or what discussion there was on this occasion as to that appointment? Um, no, there probably wasn't a lot of discussion. This would have been the best part of a year later from July the year before. And given the fact that um, it was thought he had had a, um, a, a stress breakdown of some sort, um, I don't think it would have been unusual that um, with so many months uh, off and uh, presumably um, seeing someone as well, that um, he would not then be available at a less stressful level, which is... Um, appointed assistant priest uh, in March 1990. So you maintain that at this stage um, you uh, had no suspicion or no knowledge or even suspicion as to uh, BPB's offending against children? No. I, um, I observed him as a very hard worker um, and in my time uh, in a particular parish uh, that you were referring to, I had no um, person or persons say anything to me. And uh, the next minute's at tab nine. <coughs> um, that's a meeting 15 September 1992 when you were still secretary and it seems to me that that's um, your writing, is it? I think so, yes. Yes. And partway down the page, um, one will see there that it says the position of assistant priest in, is now vacant um, and this needs to be addressed. And that's a reference to um, <clears throat> BPB and the parish that uh, he had been appointed to as assistant um, priest. Do you recall uh, whether there was any report as to the circumstances in which that position became vacant? I uh, cannot recall any detail being given to that, no. Yes, and at tab 10, uh, 
Uh, you'll see that's the minute of the meeting, 1 December 1992. And again, that's your handwriting, is it? Uh, yes, it is. We take it from that you were at the meeting? Uh, yes, I would have been. Yes. And uh, if one scrolls down to about halfway <laughs> under the heading staffing, uh, it says Bishop Malkerns mentioned that Father BPB, do you see that? Yes. And Paul David Ryan will not be involved in diocesan placements in 1993. Uh, was there any, to your <clears throat> recollection, was there any report or discussion as to why that was so in relation to BPB? Uh, no. And... Did it not occur to you to query or to think about why it is that uh, over this relatively short period of time, this position, uh, or rather that um, BPB would not be available for a diocesan placement? Uh, no, I would uh, Over this relatively short period of time, this position, uh, or rather that... Um, ...had a uh, relapse or remission and had dropped away from assistant priest at Portland then uh, it might be that he has um, long-term issues. Um, yes, and then at... Um Tab 13, there's the contact record. Uh, you see that, and it's um, uh, recording your name as uh, Father Glenn Murphy is there. If you can just scroll down so that the Monsignor can see it. <coughs> the wrong tab. Um, is that tab 13? One three of the BPD bundle? That's it. You can scroll to scroll up. <coughs> now you'll see this is 8 June 1993. Yes. Um, that would be connected with the same matter. Yes. Now, prior to that, 
we can go back to um, tab 11. Prior to that, you had arranged um, a meeting between the bishop and Father BPB. Uh, is that right? We will see it here in December 1992. Yep. And uh, you record there, this is a memo from you to the bishop in the last paragraph, that BPB understands that on this occasion you'll also be discussing with you the matter of immediate and long-term future options. Now, on this occasion, did the bishop um, tell you what the situation was in relation to BPB? I do not recall him telling me that, no. I believe he obviously wanted a meeting with him, and uh, the meeting with him was to discuss um, immediate and long-term future options. And having been asked to do that, I would have done that. Now, in the earlier period when um, you, the housekeeper had called you and you had gone there and had spoken yourself to BPB and he had told you um, information which caused you to believe he had had some sort of breakdown, um, is that something that the bishop then confirmed um, to you when you spoke to the bishop? The information which caused you to believe he had had some sort of breakdown. Um, is that something that the bishop then confirmed? Information from the bishop that I would think otherwise. And did you receive anything from the bishop or anything said by the bishop which uh, served as confirmation of what you'd learned from BPB? In other words, as to the problem being um, his uh, psychological well-being? I think it was simply um, left that that was a presumption. And it was, was it common understanding between you and the bishop that that's to, that is what your understanding was? I do believe so, because when I received the contact from Father Bryant and subsequently spoke with the police, that was a um, shock to me in the sense that there was a, a shift in my understanding and subsequently spoke with the police, that was a um, shock to me. And what you now know, the bishop... Uh, was, in fact, privy to complaints of sexual misconduct against children uh, by BPB. Yes, uh, with that um, letter I saw just recently, yes. Yes, and so the bishop was not only not sharing that with you, he was misleading you as to what the real reasons were that lay behind um, BPB's resignation. Is that not so? I don't know that he misled, he simply did not discuss. Well, he certainly allowed you to continue in your uh, understanding, and your understanding was not the truth. Yes, I continued in that understanding, yes. yes. Your uh, understanding, and your understanding was not the truth. Yes, I continued in that understanding, yes. yes. Now, dealing with the question of um, Paul David Ryan, um, you'll be aware that there was a complaint um, in uh, Penshurst was formed, is that right? Uh, that date would have been, yes. And I'd like to refer you to um, tab 19 uh, of the Ryan Tender Bundle. I beg your pardon. Uh, it's uh, the statement ni tab 19, statements bundle tab 19. Now you'll see that this is a statement of BWJ. Do you see that? Uh, yes, I do. And <clears throat> now you'll see that this is a statement of BWJ. Do you see that? Uh, yes, I do. And <clears throat> in front of you, there's a pseudonym list um, which will indicate to you uh, who BWJ is. 
a uh, third from the end. Do you see that? Uh, yes, I do, yes. And um, you, you know who that person is? No, I can't recall at this point. Uh, you'll see that um, she says, one evening in about 1990 or 91, I had a discussion with my mother about my youngest brother. She said that he had told her that Father Ryan had tried to have a bath with him. Because one evening in about 1990 or 91, I had a discussion with my mother about my youngest brother. She said that he had told her that Father Ryan had tried to have a bath with him. She said that um, that's the younger brother was a bit taken aback and concerned. Uh, so he came home and told her about it. The younger brother was 12 or 13 years old at the time, and Mum was concerned about his mental state. He'd been bullied at school, and Mum was worried that if the allegation was made public, uh, he would be subject to further... Uh, I said to my Mum, we have to act on this. We need to do something about it. I said I would talk to a friend of mine from Battle. The author of the statement um, says that... Uh, I said to my Mum, we have... This friend contacted Father Adrian uh, McInerney, who then arranged a meeting with Father Catholic Hierarchy, to see whether we could organize a meeting with someone from the church. This friend contacted Harry On. Um, it may assist you if I show you um, a name. Um, uh, the, the, this is the former name of the person who wrote the statement, and that may assist you. Perhaps not. Um, I'm sorry, no. And she goes on to say, we arranged to meet um, Glenn Murphy at the Bishop's Palace in Ballarat. Mum and I drove there from Penshurst. I remember Glenn Murphy was definitely there, and I think another person was there, but I cannot recall it. Glenn Murphy at the Bishop's Palace in Ballarat. Mum and I drove there from Penshurst. I remember Glenn Murphy. Uh, what the, her brother had said about the bath and so on. Uh, in paragraph 11, we said we felt that Father Ryan was a high risk and that we wanted him removed. And in 12, Glenn Murphy and the other person acknowledged our concerns and said that they would address them. We didn't have any further contact with Glenn Murphy, but Father Ryan was removed from the parish within a matter of weeks. That was the conclusion of my dealings with the church about this matter. Now, <clears throat> leaving aside the, the, the name of the person whose statement it is, which um, obviously you don't remember, but do you remember that, in, that report being made to you? Um, I can't clearly, in, well, clearly, I can't picture that, no. But if that report was made to me, it would have certainly been relayed to the bishop. Well, if we have a look at the Orion Tender Bundle at um, page 101... interviews, uh, which is recorded here some years later. So that earlier incident um, was in 1990 or 91, according to that statement that we looked at. And this says it's a record of a confidential interview with Father Paul David Ryan in the presence of Father Glenn Murphy, convener of the Special Issues Committee. Now this is in, in fact, um, is it your, your record of that interview? Is that right? Uh, yes, I think so. And so you, you interviewed um, Ryan. Uh, yes, at the request of the bishop. Yes. And if we look at the second page, that's ringtail um, 78. Uh, towards the foot of the page, um, it said, well, shall I just clarify, is it... Uh, it was you and Mr. Alan Spencer, a member of the Special Issues Committee, who conducted that interview. Is that right? And was also the Vicar General present. Issues Committee, who conducted that interview. Is that right? And was also the Vicar General present. Yes, Father Brian um, Finnegan. And... So it was said now um, to Ryan, following your appointment to Penshurst, there was an occasion when the bishop requested yourself and me 
to have a meeting at the bishop's suite in Ballarat, and following that meeting, there was a decision made that you... I'm unsure, but it could be. Yeah. Or I suppose it may have been... Um, it may have been Father Finnegan, the Vicar General. What I'm, what I'm um, expressing is I cannot recall having had a prior discussion with Ryan. Prior to this one. Prior to this interview in 1994? Yes. So you that saying... Doesn't, that doesn't mean it didn't occur, but I can't recall it. Yes, well, perhaps we look at the consultor's minute. That's at tab 61. <laughs> uh, on the 19th of March, 1991. <laughs> uh, on the 19th of March, 1991. Uh, again, that's your handwriting, is it? That is correct. Uh, and from that we take it you were at the meeting. And I, would, I would think so, yes. <clears throat> you'll see it's recorded that um, uh, Father Finnegan was on study leave. Do you see that? Uh, now, yes. Now, if we go over the page, um, on the second page under staffing, uh, the second entry uh, that you see there underlined in relation to Pencehurst Parish says, will become vacant Yes. Shortly after Easter, do you see that? Yes, yes. Uh, at present, no one appears as an obvious uh, replacement priest. Yes. Now, <clears throat> Easter that year uh, was 31 March 1991. I don't expect you to know that, but um, this would be suggesting that he would remain, that Father Ryan uh, would remain for another couple of weeks. Uh, is that right? That would indicate so, yes. Now, firstly, do you accept that this meeting, uh, which indicates the Pencers Parish um, becoming vacant uh, at the end of March 1991, took place after the report made uh, in the statement we looked at a few minutes ago. <coughs> yes, yes. And does that help you remember your involvement in the receipt of that report uh, in the meeting when the mother and her daughter came to see you? As I say, I can't remember it clearly, but that certainly doesn't mean that it didn't occur. And should it have occurred, uh, their um, information would have been uh, moved swiftly to the bishop. And so certainly um, at this time, in other words, at the time of this meeting, you knew of a complaint against Ryan uh, involved in inting. You knew of a complaint against Ryan uh, been aware of the fact that he had made uh, totally dysfunctional and unacceptable um, uh, offer or invitation to the child, which was um, rebuffed, uh, offer or invitation, canonical advice, because the only canonical advice I ever gave and I would have given um, my canonical advice because the only canonical advice I ever gave in matters of um, uh, any clergy with a question mark over them was that he be removed immediately. Father Bryant. Excuse me. Did you hear the evidence of Father Bryant earlier today? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. And you would have heard him then say that 
uh, Ryan had a particular reputation um, right back from his days as a seminarian that was at least known um, to Father Bryant and many others uh, impliedly from what he said. Were you aware of that reputation? Uh, no, I wasn't. Ryan, to me, is what I would describe as a grey man. Um, I can't recall that I had ever particularly um, met him uh, anywhere. Uh, during my first and only parish, he was never in the seminary when I was, my first and only parish, um, which were very good days, uh, I can't recall in any way, shape or form um, having any interaction with him. I was then overseas and I was then back in Ballarat. Um, so Ryan was um, a name to me, really. Then overseas and I was then back in Ballarat. Um, so he gave in these circumstances was to immediately um, remove um, the priests against whom a complaint had been made um, pending uh, an inquiry. Did you give that advice to the bishop on this occasion? Um, remove um, the priests against whom a complaint had been made um, pending uh, an inquiry. Did you give that advice to the bishop on this occasion? Uh, it would have probably been prior to. Yes, it would have been at the time that I gave the um, record of of an interview, an appointment. Yes. And, of course, what we see here is it didn't happen that Ryan was immediately removed. Um, he was going to be held on until um, after Easter. Um, that shouldn't have happened, should it? I gave advice um, based on what I believed uh, should be done. But I was also cognizant of the fact, uh, which is a very strong... Um, reality in the church that the diocesan bishop of any diocese um, has a uh, overarching responsibility uh, to the individual priest and I'm not privy um, to any other uh, information that he might have be it from the priest or, or from anybody else involved or interacting with them so I give my advice um, my advice to me is very clear, but in the very structure and, and make up the organic reality of um, an, an apostolic plea, but in the very structure and, and make up the organic reality, I have other advice. I'll make my decision. Typically, did you give such advice to the bishop in writing? Uh, yes, I would. Um, as you were probably aware, um, you have vast amounts of documentation, which I'm happy that you do have from my time. Um, the only way I would do things would be in my responsibilities. I'm happy that you do have from my time. Um, the only way I would do things would be in my responsibilities, whether it be in the... Um, marriage tribunal, uh, whether it be um, in ministry or the bishop's office, I would always document um, anything that I was doing in the name of the church as a contact person or any such duties, and those would go to the bishop. If consultors or merely as a scribe? No, simply the scribe. You didn't participate in the discussion? Not at all? No. Now, did you have an understanding um, at, at that meeting or at the time of that meeting as to why Ryan was to stay on until after Easter? I can't recall uh, that reason. Can I refer you in the same bundle, that's the Ryan bundle, to tab 84? Um, this is a letter from uh, the bishop 
um, as you'll see in a moment when we get to the last page, uh, 24 December 1992, um, to a facility in the USA where Ryan was due to go for an evaluation and treatment, and the bishop is here setting out um, a report on uh, Ryan's career essentially in the church up until then. But if we go to the last page, that's ringtail uh, 0013. Beg your pardon, if you go to 0012. Um, and a bit further down, you'll see the paragraph that starts in February. Carry on down. In February of last year, and I'll just to remind you that uh, this letter is dated 24 December 1992. So the bishop's talking about February of 1991. A complaint was made through a priest at our cathedral to the effect that there had been some imprudent, imprudent conduct with a senior schoolboy uh, in Penshurst Parish. The mother of the boy concerned was naturally quite disturbed, um, but was not anxious to make a public issue of the question, but was certainly anxious to parish. The mother of the boy concerned was naturally quite disturbed, um, but was not anxious to make a public issue of the question, but was certainly anxious that Paul David not be left in that position as completely out of the ordinary. Do you see that? Yes, I can see that. Was, was that as were to be made so that his change would not be seen as completely out of the ordinary? Do you see that? Yes, I can see that. Was, was that not articulated at the meeting um, that being the reason for the bishop's uh, decision in not removing Ryan uh, immediately was one which was directed to protect the appearance of things. Yes, I, I certainly um, was not um, given access to this letter at the time. And it says... This was agreed because the incident which had come to light had happened some time before, and there appeared to be no danger that it might be repeated in the meantime. Now, uh, to your knowledge, there's nothing to indicate, is there, that the incident had happened some time before? Nothing to indicate, is there, that the incident had happened some time before? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say one way or the other there unless I uh, went back and there was some other um, documentation. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say one way or the other there unless I uh, went to had. Well, you were the... On the well, face of it, you were the priest who... But that's who, my point. If, if the bishop received that message, then that was probably the detail given. At the time, well, there's another, there's another alternative. But that's my point. If if the bishop received that message, then that was probably the detail. With what you told him, as I say, because I am not clear on the meeting, I would need um, to see the information that I um, gave the bishop. And in addition, where it says there appeared to be no danger that it might be repeated in the meantime, that of course. Um, was contrary to the position that you took, which was that he should be removed immediately. Yes, that was. But that could be because he sought other um, advice. Now, if we have a look at tab 63... you'll see that in April 1991, so this is now days after Easter uh, of that year, uh, the bishop is writing to Father Ron Pickering, um, and uh, he says, I've not seen the man concerned in recent days, and <clears throat> we take that 
if you'll take that to be a reference. Uh, he says, I've not seen the man concerned in recent days, and <coughs> we take that, if you'll take that to be a reference to Ryan, but expect to do so within the next week at least. Whatever about the particular plan for the immediate future, I will make it clear that I could not give any recommendation to any other bishop that he be accepted even temporarily unless he has first undergone a period of counselling. Now, I can be accepted even temporarily. Uh, that would be something you would agree with uh, entirely, wouldn't it? If the, you, you're presuming he's talking about Ryan here? Yes. You mean based on what I... What I know. Yes. Uh, I would think that's fair. Yeah. So, in respect. I, sorry, I was just going to say, but I had never seen that documentation. Yes, fair enough. So, in respect of any uh, suggestion that there might be um, to send a priest in these circumstances, and speaking generally to some other diocese or some other place, um, that a bishop um, acting <coughs> properly generally to some other diocese or some other place. Um, the, uh, my, strong view, my strong view. Now, taking you back now, not as to your view now, but back uh, in 1991, what about the rider here that the bishop puts to this, unless he has first undergone um, a period of counselling? What was, if you can, what was your view at that time as to the effectiveness or appropriateness uh, of, a, of the reliance on counselling? Professional counselling to me was a great unknown. Um, I think what the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference was trying to get at with the um, protocols uh, and what was the prudent move, which is remove them and make sure that they remain removed indefinitely um, pending an investigation would, I think, include um, their understanding at the time of a clinical analysis also of the person and a professional clinical report back to the diocesan bishop, I would imagine that would be part of their process of the day. Back to the diocesan bishop, I would imagine that would be part of their process of the day going back decades. No, are you, are you Sorry, aware? I'm not sure I understand. You say... You would imagine that would be part of their process of the day going back decades. Mm, going back to this time. Sorry, going back to when? Um, when the bishop's talking here about um, undergone a period of counselling. Right. But your understanding is an understanding that you had, you mean, two decades. Did the bishop have his own reports too? I would think un un undoubtedly, yes. Well, uh, did you know? Sorry? Did you know whether he had records? Um, I suppose the best way is to give you my understanding of the way Bishop Mulkerns worked. Um, circumspect uh, would be my description. In one sense, if you were involved in something, he would tell you what he thought you needed to know. If you weren't involved, in one sense, if you were involved in something, he would meetings, they could be any meetings. They could be the diocesan religious council. Um, and if you saw him that night or the next day, he wouldn't discuss what they had discussed. He did have in his office a night or the next day, he wouldn't discuss what they had discussed his own typewriters. He had one in each place. He had his own locked files um, in his office and it was quite clear that he had one in each place. 
he had his own locked files. He would dictate letters sometimes for a Bernadette, the office secretary, to type, but it would not be uncommon for him to type his own. And certainly he would work reasonably long hours at night in his own residential office where he had his own typewriter and would do a lot of his own correspondence. Reasonably long hours at night in his own residential office where... This conference to develop a protocol. Sorry, the... You know of the work of the Bishop's Conference to develop a protocol in relation to the dealing with... Yes. ...sexual offenders in the church. Um, and, and is it your recollection that by... 1988 or thereabouts, there was a general recognition amongst clergy that the church had a problem with sexual offending? I can only speak from uh, my perspective. And my, my perspective was that during my time in the seminary, um, then prior to my ordination and my ordination, in my first parish at Wendaree Seminary, um, then prior to my ordination and my ordination, in my that has to do canon law for the sake of the marriage tribunal, as which actually was your main job, that took most of your time. Um, right through those times, I did not think. I was not aware that there was a criminal problem in the clergy in the do Right through those times, I did not think, I was not aware that there was a criminal problem in the clergy in the diocese. Now that's, that's me. Um, I think it was something that wasn't spoken of, obviously, if there were people who knew. When I came back, um, I was already then in a position served to me. I certainly became aware of them. Um, to give you an example, um, the first couple of years that I was back, uh, there was um, a, a lady, who a person who presented herself, a person who presented themselves. And not to go into great detail, but it was horrendous. Um, it was a horrendous incest situation, and I simply couldn't. I started by I couldn't get my head around it, but then I could. And it was a horrendous incest situation, and I simply couldn't. I started by I couldn't get um, extracted that person from that situation, which was quite dangerous, very nasty family. And that was a completely um, shattering event for me. Did that involve a priest? No. I think we'll take lunch. Shattering event for me. Did that involve a priest? <laughs>